Well, in the beginning of um, L&L Holding Company, our work was uh, very focused, as we focus today on certain projects, um, existing historical buildings and doing modern interventions. So when we were um, looking around for inspiration on some of our projects, of course, the Reichstag you know, comes to mind. And when I looked at that project, um, I was very, very inspired by it. It's really kind of magical how he did that in modern intervention. And I really became very thoughtful about Norman at that point. As years went on, um, when Norman, uh, the building, the Hearst Tower was being erected, I would see the Hearst Tower uh, every day when I was coming to my office, I drove past it. And it was really magical on the skyline. It was transformational. Every day I looked at it, it really looked a little bit different based upon how the light was reflecting upon it. And I thought to myself then, I said, one day I'm going to do a project with Norman Foster. So the competition uh, began when we sent out a request for uh, proposals in this, um, in this book. Um, in, we were inspired by modernism and we wanted to send a clear message to the architects that were competing in this thing of how we uh, viewed the project. We wanted to give the project its sort of, uh, its grounding. So when you look at this book, um, uh, it's very, very simple, uh, but it's very clear. And what was really very interesting is how Norman responded um, to this book that we sent out. Uh, this, was, this, was no, this was Norman's response. There really was now a dialogue between what we sent out and his response. So right away I knew he was listening and responding to me. So after that dialogue um, began, just with the very introduction, um, Norman came to our office and began his presentation. And I would tell you that um, there is nobody that can present better than Norman. The way he articulates his vision um, is extremely important. It's almost mesmerizing. I was very concerned about how are we going to execute um, a new building that's fresh, uh, that's, that really changes things in Park Avenue, but also is very, very respectful to the urban landscape that already exists in, in uh, Park Avenue. And going through the competition and seeing how all the other architects do design their buildings and seeing how Norman designed his buildings also really made it very, very assuring that Norman's choice of how he was dealing with those issues was very, very, very uh, excellent. And today you see the building, um, although it's so respectful of the urbanity of Park Avenue, it really is entirely different. Um, and it's magnificent. It's changed everything. The building had so, lots of challenges. I, you know, um, the main challenge really, of course, was that uh, when the building was originally built, the, the first building of 425 Park, was built in compliance with all the zoning regulations. In the 80s, they downzoned it, so if you actually tore down the existing building, you could not build back the same size building. You would lose 25% of the size of the building. So that was, that's very, very challenging because land costs in Manhattan, particularly on Park Avenue, are the highest there is in the country. So we had to retain portions of the old building, horizontal steel in the building, we had to retain it. So that was sort of a uh, extraordinarily, very, very complex uh, thing that no one has ever really done before. Well, you know, there, Norman is very, very focused, very, very uh, detail-oriented, a great problem solver. One of the things I love about his work is that when you're sitting there talking about a problem, he actually starts to sketch something. Uh, the, the art of sketching um, is really lost. I have so many of the architects that we work with on other projects, everything is computerized. Um, so when Norman is going to solve a problem, he takes out his notepad, he takes out his pen, and starts to express himself that way. And it's really not only magical, but it's very, very effective, and I really appreciate that.